I, I thought I would talk a little bit about uh, some of the various stages of uh, carving and the different things I've been interested in over the years. Um, you know, I started carving, playing around with wood when I was a kid, really, and then I would go in and out over the years, um, phases of, you know, carving for a while and then I wouldn't touch it for a while and just sort of self-taught, you know. Um, and then, uh, so I used to carve these little, uh, you know, neckerchief slides for Boy Scouts. They would go on a, these, your neckerchief goes through here. So, um, you know, just try different, different little things. These are, these are things I've carved recently, but that's the kind of thing I would do when I was a kid. Here's a little, you know, hatchet and, uh, I would carve something like a little letter opener out of whatever I had laying around. And then I got interested in uh, in sculpting for a while, so then I started doing things like this. Um, and this was actually several pieces of wood I glued together, and then I would just take the block of wood, drill some holes in it, and they would start to create negative space. And then from that, it suggests a form, and you just make whatever. So it's very abstract, free form kind of thing. Um, and then. This was actually a log that I found, a piece of uh, walnut log. Same idea, just drilled some holes and I get very uh, mixed reactions on this one as to what it is, but it's just a pure abstract, I, I assure you. Um, and then um, I would go with my uh, scouts up to summer camp and we would do just, you know, whittling to just, you know, while away the hours. So this one, you know, things like this, the ball in the box and the chain. This is all out of one little stick of wood. Um, and you know something like this. This was originally a square block so then you have to make a round block and then you, you cut away you know until you get to where it is. <laughs> People always say how do you you know how do you do that and there's a kind of a wood carver's joke that you uh, you take a piece of wood and you carve away everything it doesn't look like you know whatever it is you're trying to make so uh, but that's true it actually is true you know when you, when you get there. Um, and then, uh, so then recently, very recently, I'd say the last, since last summer, I decided to really just carve all the time and just try to carve every day. And it's amazing. You get a lot done that way and you get pretty good at it too. So, uh, and I, and I, I'm interested in a lot of different things. So I don't have one thing that I carve. So I carve, you know, figures, but I also carve other things like these little, uh, these Celtic love spoons. Um, and these are fun to make with uh, all the twists and turns. This one was one I made for my wife here, so that was recent. And these are ones for sale. Hopefully, we'll get those out there. And then uh, Christmas time, you know, everybody likes to carve Santas. And as you can see, by all these characters, I don't have one uh, kind of style. See how different they all look. So, you know, I just, every one I do, I like to experiment. This one's a little bigger, so I try to get, you know, I'm trying to get bigger and bigger with these things. And then here's one that, uh, this is one that's not painted yet, so this is how it looks when it's unpainted. People always ask me what wood we use. So we start with, this is called basswood. And it's, uh, it's, it's light. It's actually considered a hardwood, but it's very light. It has a very straight grain, very, very uh, fine grain, so it holds detail. And yet it's pretty soft. And easy to work with. That gets made into smaller blocks like this and then we'll have you have to have some sort of a pattern like here's a, a little gnome that I did. Okay so you have a side view and a uh, front view so that's really important. That gets transferred onto our our block okay and then all this space around it gets cut off at the bandsaw and then uh, and then you just start carving away till it looks like a Santa. That's simple as that. Here's another one that's. Uh... Oh, this one was uh, actually something new for me because the head is separate. So that allows you to kind of get to places that would be difficult to get at. So I can carve all this detail that would be under the beard. I'd never be able to get under there. And then afterwards, if you want to give him a little attitude, you know, you can always glue the head on a little bit of an angle. So that's that's something new. Here's another little short fat Santa that I did. That's, that's a fun one. Um, 
And then I did a lot of, uh, last Christmas I did a lot of ornaments. So here was a pattern that I found. And I blew it up to the size that I want. And then that'll get carved into something like this. This one's unpainted. Here's a, here's a smaller one that, that got painted. So that's how it looks when it's all done. So these are kind of the stages, you know, starting with the pattern. This is our, this is actually finished, ready to paint. And this is uh, the painted one. Cool. And then I like, I like carving, you know, things that are kind of, you know, twisted together. I got this, this is this Celtic uh, triquinta, I think it's called. Uh, has a lot of different meanings, but I made an ornament out of it. So that's the pattern. That's the, the finished one. Yeah, so that's it. Can you show us your table? Yeah, my table is the thing that really sort of um, made, uh, I guess, helped me to become more prolific because it's just so convenient. So I made this this lap table, got, got an idea. I had seen a pattern for it, and then I changed it a little bit to suit my own purpose. So this, this holds all my tools, right? And I can just, uh, you know, wherever I am, watching TV, whatever, I, can, I can't do it on this bench, but this sits on my lap, sits up here so the, the chips don't go uh, all over the floor, even though they do. Um, and then whatever I'm working on is just, you know, I can just be right here and just, you know, have all my tools in front of me and all my non-carving tools that I use, various odds and ends, pencils. The carving glove, very important, otherwise you get fingers cut which I do anyway. <laughs> we put these little things on here to try to, you know, keep keep things from getting uh, damaged or uh, from poking me. So... That is very practical. Yeah, it works great. So, um, in the summer I like to carve outside so I can just take this with me and I like to carve when I go camping so I can just bring it, bring it with me. Um, and then, you know, I stay up late and watch TV so I can just sit there and I just carve and uh, like I said, it's it's a lot of hours that you would otherwise not just sit and just carve that way. Uh, you know, I'm doing something else. I'm listening to music, watching TV, watching a movie, whatever. Uh, yep, yeah, and then uh, it goes with me wherever I go, so that's mm -hmm. great. It's portable. Mm -hmm. um, if I had, to, you know, sometimes it's a little cold out here, and I get tired just standing and carving. So this is much. You can work for a long period of time because you don't have to. Uh, you can be sitting comfortably. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Thanks a lot, Don. You're welcome. Okay. Yeah.